Marshallese people, we are living on tiny coral atolls, and they're just about, some of them are smaller than the size of this conference. Well, there are parts of the island where it's so small and so thin. Point being, we are very, very vulnerable. I'm personally concerned with climate change because uh, we are seeing the effects of climate change right now. We're living with the effects. Uh, I just visited an island just this past weekend that used to be lush, that used to have trees and coconut trees, and uh, that used to have fruit and crabs and everything. And now, after just 10 years, it's completely dead. All It's just sand and a pile of rocks, and that's all. And that was within 10 years of time. Actually, how old are you guys? Are you guys 15? Anybody in here 15? No. No, you guys are all younger than 15. You're 14, you're almost 15. So I did a history project when I was 15 years old. Have you, have you guys ever heard of a competition called History Day? No. You guys do that at all? So there was a competition, because I, I was born in the Marshall Islands, and then I moved to Hawaii when I was six years old. So I was raised in Hawaii. So that's why I present myself very American. You know, If you see a, a traditional Marshallese, they don't sound or look like me or carry themselves like me. It's because I grew up in the States. So um, spoken word was something I picked up when I was a senior in high school. But the nuclear testing project, the history project that I did, I did it when I was 15 years old. And it really influenced me, and it kind of changed how I looked at my own history. And it, changed, and it made me realize that not enough people know this history, and I wanted more people to know it. So that's why I wrote this piece. Spoken word is just kind of a vehicle, right? I know some people think it's cliche, it's whack, whatever. But it's a really, it's a really useful tool to get people interested in your story. At 15, I decided to do my history project on nuclear testing in the Marshall Islands. Time to learn my history, I decide. I weave through book after article after website, all on how the US once used my island home for nuclear testing. I sift through political jargon. Tables of nuclear weapons with names like Operation Bravo, Crossroads, and Ivy. Quotes from generals like, I think there's many mediums to uh, fight climate change. And I think exploring all options is really necessary because uh, as far as negotiations, as far as the science, those are hard for people to understand. and it. It, it, it strips the humanity of the issue. And where and poetry, what poetry does is it brings humanity, it brings, it touches people. And it's a, a poem that I wrote about the importance of the number two degrees versus the 1.5 degrees of global warming. The other night, my one-year-old was a fever pressed against my chest. Together, we wrestled with a thermometer that read 99.8 degrees. The doctor says technically 100.4 is a fever. But I can see her flushed face, how she drapes across my lap, listless. It becomes not just about numbers and distant figures, but it's actually people who are being affected, and it's the stories that we remember. And so that's what poetry has the power to do. Hello, my name is Yala Ita, and I'm a senior from Roosevelt High School. Um, just a few weeks ago, we were able to have Kathy Gentnell Kitchener come to our school and speak on climate change. Um, not only did she speak about climate change, but she talked about um, Pacific Islander youth nowadays, and it was just such a blessing. I, I use that word blessing in such a big term, but um, as a young Pacific Islander woman, I have never in classrooms, sorry, it just gets me so emotional, but I have never learned about climate change in any of my classrooms. Science, history, and the effects it has on the Pacific Islands. Um, my people are having to evacuate their homes these islands that generations before us have found um, because of this issue, and not many know about this, about how it, it really affects my people. And um, this piece that I wrote about um, was inspired by Kathy. Um, I also do poetry, but um, just being able to hear her and in this workshop really um, influenced me to write a piece about climate change. She stands in the ocean, taking in her surroundings, Reminiscing of this island she calls home. The next morning, she makes her daily offerings into the ocean, whispering, are you a friend or a foe? Please spare us some more time. I'll climb to the highest peak with my people on my back, if that is what it takes to find Pico. The water rises, the water to, rises her to her head. She is ready to surrender into the sea. Yet she hears the chants of her people from afar, screaming, we will not go, we will stay, we will plant our feet into the earth. She too will plant her feet into the earth. She is staying on this island. Thank you. Okay. Right, thank you. Yahweh Komodib. My family and I have traveled a long way to be here today. 
all the way from the Marshall Islands. The Marshall Islands encompasses more than two million square kilometers of ocean, and so it makes sense that our culture is one of voyaging and navigation. Those of us from Oceania are already experiencing it firsthand. We've seen waves crashing into our homes and our breadfruit trees wither from the salt and drought. We look at our children and wonder how they will know themselves or their culture should we lose our islands. The people who support this movement are indigenous mothers like me, families like mine, and millions more, standing up for the changes needed and working to make them happen. I ask world leaders to take us all along on your ride. We won't slow you down. We'll help you win the most important race of all, the race to save humanity.